Okay, so uh, <clears throat> what to talk about, really? Um, well, major news. Spanish police are joining the war against tourists on the Costa Brava and in Mallorca, which is not fed up with tourists. Um, a swimmer in the Olympics, we've got gold, can't remember his name now. He um, said he's going to retire now in his early 30s. As you know, the Olympics uh, finished, big ceremony. Um, also, it's the hottest weather, literally on record, quite recently. Can't think of any other news, really. Ah, that's right. There was some random man, believed to be a Romanian, who stabbed a 11-year-old girl in London's West End, in a place called Leicester Square. I don't even know it or heard of it. It's a very, very popular tourist spot. But anyway, look, you know, this, we, don't, yeah, we won't talk about that. It's coincidental. The man may have mental health problems. Whatever it is, people weren't terrified surrounding the area. So it wasn't a terrorist crime and it shouldn't be reported as such. Or it hasn't, to the best of my knowledge, hasn't been reported as a terrorist crime, maybe because people weren't terrified in seeing that site. Um, stay in your lane. Yeah? Stay in your lane. Don't complain. Stay in your lane. There may be many, many more instances like this. Just stay in your lane. Zip it. Zip it, buddy. Zip it. Now, about a week ago, there was a mass counter-protest in a place called Warmstow, northeast London. Not far from me. And they successfully protested against the far right. In fact, let's not use the word far right because that would be spreading false information. We're not allowed to spread false information or information that we know isn't true. So there has been no far right on any of these demonstrations. That is false information. For example, how many far right political parties do you know? The only one that springs to my mind is Britain First. And to the best of my knowledge, their membership is dismal. I think there's uh, more members for Noddy and Big Ears than there is for the British National Party. Yet you would think the constant mentioning of the far right in their hordes would have a much larger membership. It doesn't, though. Because there aren't far right. There's not really a far right movement in this country. As I said, it's just a label, a slur on the white working class. And anyone else who believes in British values. But I want to get back to the counter protest in Walthamstow. Because what I find interesting, apart from the councillor who was uh, making violent uh, protests or slitting the throats of this uh, imaginary far-right movement was the local MP Stella Creasy. She was in attendance. Bully for her. It's her constituents. That's what MPs do. They stand behind their constituents. They stand behind the causes that they believe in. Which begs the question, really, Where's Nigel Farage? Why wasn't Nigel Farage on some of these marches regarding a British values, i.e. like on the 27th of July in Trafalgar Square? Where was Nigel Farage? Yeah. Prior. I'm not talking about when you know the, the stuff hit the fan and, and the stupidness happened and rioting happened and all that sort of stuff. 
But why didn't he show his face in solidarity about what happened in Southport? Really? I mean, crikey, even Yvette Cooper and Keir Starmer saw it as a photo opportunity. Why wasn't Nigel Farage there? Has he disappeared? Is he not outraged by this? I don't know. It's just something and things what I think about, you know. These MPs, seems to me that Nigel Farage is all talk. Yeah. I say big hat. No horse. Okay. Um, as I said, please guys, just stay in your lane. In fact, in all honesty, I would have thought that the intelligentsia and notable figures would have come out against these Ukrainian Ukrainian sort of a, a, a piece of legislation to stifling free speech, which Keir Starmer has implemented. You would have thought there'd be lots of pushback about that from the intelligentsia. And they are zip. They are zip. It's very easy to see how you introduce totalitarianism. It's quite frightening to see how you introduce totalitarian totalitarianism into a country. How easy it is, really, really. Now, uh, also in the news, they were talking about a place where well-renowned in the Second World War was the largest uh, tank battle, yeah? And uh, that was in Kursk, yeah? In Kursk, in Ukraine. Um, once again, you know, we shouldn't get involved in this. We've got our own problems. We have an insurgency, in my opinion. We have an insurgency in this country, and it's a cultural war, metaphorically. And if we take the lives of almost 200 people who have died through acts of terrorism, literally speaking, okay? But it seems like there's an insurgency of a cultural war in our country. And there's silence because everybody, especially now, is even spared, scared to talk about it. You've been banned. You've been banned from talking about it. Okay? So why would anyone join the military? This is my bet and wire at the moment. It's just, seriously, I love the army. I love the British army. I love the army. I'm very proud to have served. But in all honesty, I don't see that there's a case for joining the British Army today. I don't recommend that you join the army today. What precisely is it you are defending? What are British values? That's the question, just generally. What are British values? Now, it's interesting because I listened or heard a little bit of a podcast from Paul Thorpe who said that he feels that he's been bamboozled in having uh, patriotism in his heart, having been groomed by the zeitgeist of his generation. I'm a little bit below his generation, just by a small clasp, yeah? But I know what he's talking about. All the films about the Second World War, about some major battle, what happened just before we were born, okay? And this whole idea about who we were or are as a nation, how great we were, how great we are, that whole sense and feeling of pride about being British, none of it is relevant today. None of it. None of it. Now, we know, or from my understanding, there was a revisionist uh, situation about Britain and empire, and that sort of happened around the time of decolonization, because after the Second World War, when Britain was virtually skint and bankrupt and owed to the Americans, the Americans wanted all the old powers to rid of their colonies before money would be paid out and loans be paid out for reconstruction. And that would enable America to get into those markets which they felt were blocked off. And as a part of that process, there was, especially within academia, 
a lot of writing going on, um, dim dismissing empire, rubbishing empire. Okay? And this is where you get a lot of stories. This is where it's come from, really. It came from across the channel. Oddly enough, uh, you know, Powell spoke about it. He was very mistrustful of the Americans. Uh, but this whole... Uh, aggressiveness against British Empire and Empire's aims, etc., and looking at all the negative parts and consequences of uh, the Empire. And, you know, the same, you know, people talk about policing, for example, in this country, and saying that, you know, the reason why people are policed in this country is by the consent of the people. Yeah, because if everybody, as I mentioned before, why do we obey the law? We obey the law because we believe it's in our interests. Well, the same goes for empire, the British Empire. The amount of people who were on the ground in the British Empire was a fraction of the total population of Britain. The British Empire managed to rule one third of the world based on the concept, not only of indirect rule, but those who were under the power of the British Empire believed it was in their best interests upon which to be ruled. That's the reality of it. That is the reality of it. But all of that comes to a head in the 70s, onto the 80s and 90s, yeah, where people are made to feel ashamed about the British Empire. Okay. Um, oh, what's that lady's name now? God, you're going to have to remind me now. The Labour Labour lady who said to Mugabe, "We don't Labour." When after Blair came in, uh, she was the cause of part of the Zimbabwe's ruin. When she said to Mugabe, "We're going to renege on the uh, Lancaster House uh, Agreement." Because we are Labour and we do not do colonialism. God, you, you, someone remind me of that lady's name. We've got a vision of her now. This is Northern Lass with dark hair. Uh, but, uh, you know, this, this is the thing. Yeah. Uh, this anti Britishness. So when it comes to ideas of joining the army, don't do it. Do not do it. Yeah. Because Whatever values you were told about Britain, being a democratic country and all that palaver, yeah, it ain't right. Those values have been consigned to the bin, the history bin, yeah? And today it goes to show we are heading towards an authoritarian dictatorship, in my opinion. When someone can put in rules where people are serving long sentences for very minor things, like a tweet, a tweet, yeah, then you you know, you know it's a crazy situation. I remember when I was young, um, and before I went to join the army, it was I was still of an age and in an age whereby a lot of people had actually experienced and fought in the Second World War. And a lot of uh, Jewish people uh, in my school had, had experience of concentration camps. And I remember, oh, hold on, let me just take that. Not safe by the bell. But I remember basically uh, with uh, uh, Jewish people, I remember reading a book, The Four Chimneys, I believe it was. And it was about uh, a woman who had worked in a concentration camp as a prisoner and talking about the experiences of what it was like in the concentration camps. Now, at that time, I, I was really wanting to go into the army. Uh, the documentary The World at War was on, and they showed the episode about Belson concentration camp, etc. And I remember saying to myself, if I was in a situation in the army where I was being ordered to commit such atrocities, where do I stand? And for me, I have believed it to be immoral. And I believe that responsibility lied at the individual. And although, for example, many of the people, not many not many of the Nazis who committed atrocities actually faced trial. Let's be honest about it. Very, very few were actually 
faced trial for their atrocities. Most of them got away with it. Most of them. But uh, I remember that if I was in that situation, what would I do? Uh, and I know that their defence was I was just following orders. That was the stuff. It was like it was like I was just following orders. That was the standard defence. And at the Nuremberg trial, they deemed that that defence was not a defence. You have an individual responsibility. But even before I was aware of that, I had decided that I would rather die than follow these illegal orders because I knew them to be wrong. If it was a case that you're going to murder, mow down a village because of some sort of reprisal or throw some child in an oven. I had decided, I was 16 actually, before I joined the army. I was joining the army at 16, but this was before I left to join the army. I decided that rather than carry out illegal orders, I, I'll, I'll, I would die. I'd, I'd have to put my life on the line yeah, to do the correct thing. Okay. Okay, so what's my point? What am I getting at? Well, everyone likes to point their fingers at the Nazis and everyone likes to point their fingers about Germany and laugh at them as a nation because it was a democracy what voted in his, uh, Hitler. This is the thing they can't, this is what the thing what the bourgeoisie cannot stomach. Hitler didn't take over power. Yeah. Hitler didn't um, take it by force. Hitler got into power by the will of the people. Yeah. And that is a lesson which everyone has to take note of. It's not a case that there's some big, you know, aggressive bloody queue and the next overnight all of a sudden we've got a new government. No. It was voted in. I repeat, it was voted in. Once it was in power, it started implementing laws to consolidate its power. And everybody went by it. If you need to be a teacher, if you need to be a lawyer, if you need to be well, whatever, you had to be a member of the Nazi party. All right? So people joined because it was in their interests to do so. Same thing can happen here in this country. Right? Government is in power at the moment, is introducing very authoritarian type laws. It's going unchallenged, unchecked. Yeah, who's to say they can't ratchet up a bit? Who's to say that? Yeah, who is to say that? Yeah. But I'm ranting, I've ranted on for quite a bit, so I'll leave it at that. It's something for you to think about. Yeah, just stay in your lane. Yeah, stay in your lane. Obey. Yeah, obey. Stay in your lane. Don't complain. Yeah. Or fight for the values which you fought for. Think about the Britain and what Britain means to you. All right? Okay. Keep them peeled over and out.